Today, we have a 2018 Ford F-150. Now, this begins the third generation of the Coyote motor and the first generation of the new 10-speed. The biggest complaint, because this is the first generation of this transmission, they are clunky, they are notchy, they shift um, as though they have no idea where they're gonna go next. It shifts all over the place. You'll start out in first, next thing you know, it jumps right to fourth, it'll go to sixth and back to third. It's very unpredictable and it continues to learn, but it never really makes up its mind what it's going to do. We're gonna fix that today. We're gonna to go through the transmission. We're gonna make this transmission shift normally. We're gonna give the customer a transmission that he can be happy about. And the bonus is, you know, we're at a dyno shop. So we're gonna give you a bunch more torque down low where this truck can perform, get better fuel mileage, and give it that horsepower up top that makes it really interesting when you wanna step into it and give your buddy a ride. Alrighty, here at International Dyno Authority, we always run baselines before we do anything with tuning. What's the definition of a baseline? It's to build information. It's to find out information. It's to populate your data logger. If you don't know where things are ahead of time, if you don't know where the fueling is correct, where the fueling is incorrect, if the vehicle is coming up and hitting a knock sensor and having the timing retarded. If you don't know any of that information, when you go in to do your tuning, how are you going to pull any data and look and make an informed decision. So that's what we're doing. Right now, we're gonna do a few baselines. We always do them in the same order. We do a baseline, we look, as soon as the horsepower starts dropping, we stop because we know we've, we've hit the maximum amount of power the vehicle's gonna make. However, what we will do is see the first one, the second one, and we'll keep looking at it, and we will communicate back and forth with the system we have as to when we stop doing baselines. As soon as the torque and the horsepower come up and they either repeat a couple of times or they start to come down, we stop doing baselines. At that point, we move on to tuning. So, and you always have to do tuning in a particular order. Leave the ignition timing alone or take the ignition timing to a base where you know it's safe. Work on fuel, 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 and fuel till you get the fueling correct. We're not talking about the octane, we're not talking about the injectors, we're not talking about the pressure. We are talking about your fuel curve. A lot of things and a lot of times that we see a lot of things come in here. Somebody's completely missed a the fueling. They just went straight to the distributor and turned it. They went straight into the timing table and just started cranking up the timing. You have to have the fuel curve first, so that's what we do. Fuel curve first, followed by cam timing. If you have access to the cam timing, you have to make sure that the cam is in the correct spot at the correct time. After that, you can work on things like VE table tuning. You can work on refinement, you can work on um, math tuning, and then you can go to ignition timing where you start to make and see your big improvements in power. But until you've laid the, the uh, groundwork and you've done the baselines and you've done all the work ahead of time, it's impossible to just jump to the end and put a tune in it. So when we're done all of that, that's just on the engine side we're talking about, if we have full access to the transmission, like we do this morning with this 2018 Ford F-150 with the five liter in it and the 10 speed, we're gonna go through and retune the transmission. Now, we make the transmission shift from first to second to third to fourth to fifth. Imagine that in the proper order. It doesn't jump all over the place. We give it a set of tunes that act differently in different modes. So in eco mode, it acts differently than it does in regular mode. It acts differently than it does in tow mode or snow mode or uh, sport mode. Now, sport mode can be a little sporty after we're done, and that's fun. That's the whole point of it. You put it in sport mode because you're out with your buddies and you say, hey, look, my truck goes pretty good. Watch this. So that's kind of fun. So we go through and we do that every single time on every single vehicle. making our baseline passes and the truck did something a little different, not a lot different, but a little different than what we're used to. It actually made a couple of passes where I would have just said, yeah, we're done, that's it. And then we decided to run one more pass and it came up. So we made a maximum of 287 horsepower at the wheels, 270 plus foot pounds at the wheels. That was the best pass. It could repeat 
260, 260 a few times. But then it suddenly dropped away to 290, or sorry, 190, and then it came back up to 240. And basically what that shows you is that the stock tune, the way Ford does it, there are so many parameters in there that are messed up. And when I say messed up, I mean they're not consistent or they take too much away all at once. That's why a custom tune gives a very good consistent run every time. When we're done this, we'll literally be able to overlay the passes one after another and they'll look almost identical to each other each time. And the only thing that'll happen is if we get too much heat under the hood, it'll start to come down a little bit because the intake air temp starts to get too high and the computer says, whoa, if you have that much intake air temp, what I need to do is pull a little bit of timing out, which drops the horsepower down. Now, these engines only take a bit of timing to begin with. The combustion chamber, the Hemi combustion chamber on this style of engine with the overhead cam and the spark plug in the middle is only taking 19 degrees maximum timing. So if you take away any timing at all, if you go down to 17, 16, 15, you're going to lose a lot of power because it's a big percentage. Remember, if you're at 44 and you go down to 42, it's only two degrees. But if you're at 19 and you go down to 17, that's a large percentage of 19 compared to 40. So these are very, very susceptible to getting hot, pulling out a bit of timing and losing some power. We retune that. We get the fuel curve correct so that when it gets hot, it has the fuel there to compensate for it and it runs the way it's supposed to run. It doesn't just take a bunch of power away. So we're, we're up quite a ways from where we were. We do tuning in steps like we talked about before. So this is step number one. Wally has gone through the data logger. He has read the information from the data logger and he's made changes based on what he sees in the logger. Now we're gonna to continue to make the bottom end of this as aggressive as we can because it's a truck. We want it to have lots of immediate towing power. We want it to have lots of response as soon as you put your foot into it. That doesn't mean going into the algorithm for the throttle pedal and whacking the throttle pedal wide open. That means actually using the science of making more power to give you more response naturally. So if you buy one of those um, pedal commanders, what they do is they simply take the throttle pedal, as soon as you give it a little bit here, it gives it a different electrical signal and it opens the throttle more aggressively. That's not giving you more power, that's just killing your fuel mounds and making you drive like you're a teenager, you're back, you're 17 with your first Firebird with the 302 in it again. So in this case, what we're doing is we're giving it more power all the way through the range through science. The science is how much fuel does it need? How much air is it moving? We have a few different sensors we can rely on. The mass airflow sensor. We also have grams of air per cylinder per second that we can measure and we can get that and we can extrapolate that from the map sensor and the mass airflow plus Wally knows how much each cylinder is injecting fuel. These are direct injected, so we know exactly how much fuel per cylinder is going in, and we adjust that, we build the curve until it's correct. Right now, we've come up from our very best, 280 plus horsepower, we're now sitting at 315.7 horsepower, and we're sitting at 319.7 foot-pounds of torque. Okay, over my shoulder I've done an overlay, the very best pass, that we had when it came in on its own and the pass we have right now. It's not the best pass we have yet because we've just done step number one, but I'm gonna show you a few differences between where it was and where it is now. We look at the green line, this is torque. We can see it comes up and then it just sort of noses over really badly and then it literally stops here before it climbs back up again. What we've done over here is we've worked from here to here. So we've worked from 2000 RPM all the way up to the 3200 RPM, we have this section a lot better and it's corrected. Not only do we have a lot more torque, but from here to here is a lot nicer curve. It's not perfect, but that's because we do this in steps. Now we want to work from here to here. So we're going to start at 3500 and work our way up to 4500. Now, this is where you want your truck to work. You don't want to have to rev it six or 7,000 to make your F-150 pull your trailer, pull your camper, 
or go on the weekend and help your buddies move with their house. What you'd like to do is have power right away. That's what we're doing with this, and that's why we worry about this. That's why we do an overlay, and we show you step by step. So the first step, we got from 2,000 to 3,500, pretty good. There's a lot more there to work with now. Now we'll go from 3,500 to 4,500, and then we'll work all the way through to the end. That's all fueling and cam timing. So the idea here is to continue to work on getting this area to be stronger and also to make everything correct based on the facts because now we've pulled more data. Let's make a few more changes and go through from there. We get the fueling correct, we, go, we work on cam timing, and after we get the cam timing done, then we work on ignition timing, and then we go to the transmission. Let's go to the next step right now. Already after our second pass, now Wally has been in the truck the whole time and his job is to read the data and make the changes. He knows what changes need to be made. We are not installing a tune. What we are doing is making changes based on what we see needs to be done. So if we overlay very quickly here, our best pass when we came in and where we are now, we are now up to 334 foot-pounds of torque at the wheels, 319 horsepower at the wheels. We've smoothed out the curve a lot, but the main thing is we've taken this and we've moved all of this torque up to a higher octave. Where before we were just peaking here, now we start higher than we were peaking before, and we stay there the entire time, and this truck just pulls all the way through the range. So Wally will continue to work with this, but at this point, if you were to just leave it the way it is, it would be a lot better. Wally always makes it quite a bit better. And again, we are working with fueling and, ca and cam timing. When we start into the ignition portion, that just means not giving it a bunch more ignition, not saying, oh, 26 degrees of time, because these only take 19. Changing the ignition curve to be correct for what he's seeing in the data. All right, so now we actually have enough power that the engine is creating off the bottom. It's actually making the torque converter work. And if we look at the graph of the green here, we've done our green, which is our best overlay from the beginning, the most torque that it made when it came in, and the most torque that it's made since we've tuned the engine. The torque converter is actually working now. So if we look here, this is actually torque converter attempting to catch up and then it catches it right here and then from here it just goes straight up all the way through. On this one you can see it comes in and it kind of just lags and lags and then it actually goes down for a while and then it starts up on a curve but the curve is just kind of angled over and then eventually just runs out. Here we start at a much higher octave, we catch the torque converter here and we just keep building speed all the way through. 345 horsepower versus 287 where it came in. We've done the few things that the customer asks us to do. Transmission tune and the auto start on off. We give the customer the option. Do you like that? Do you not like that? It's a 2018. At some point the starter's going to fail. If you keep going up to an intersection, every time you stop for two seconds, it shuts the engine off. Then it starts again. It shuts the engine off. It's going to kill the starter. So beyond the performance, the tuning here that we do is customized, custom transmission tune. Each truck is custom tuned for itself, depending on what we see from the data logger. We are not installing a tune ever. We are simply tuning based off the data logger. We're using a, a software called HP Tuners, 
We make the truck more efficient. We give you more power. It's a lot more fun to drive, but really, when you step on the gas now, it's going to go from first to second to third to fourth, and it's going to go through the gears normally, where you took this truck for a drive just a few minutes ago. When you took off, it's going to go from first to fourth. It's then going to go up to six and kick back to third. It goes all over the place based on speeds and illogical tables inside the computer that just don't work for what a consumer really wants. We are uh, here at our final um, result for this tune. Extremely happy with what we are giving the uh, customer. Now they go for a test drive and we get to see the smile on their face when they come back through the door. Ha, ha, ha.